only thing we understand. I'ma stand till on Jersey in the stands. I'ma hit yeah, you on the slide. I don't yeah, know. What's your theory? <laughs> Uh, you, he oh, said boy. rabbit holes. That's what that's what we lost you at. That's what you said. Uh, rabbit you said, holes. Said, yeah, conspiracy rabbit holes. Let's get back. Yeah. To so that. one of them, one of them was uh, because flat Earth. I just can't like even. I can't get there. I watch Me it because it's entertaining, but I can't get Me there. Neither. Neither. But one wow. that I can sign up for and I'll listen to is that the reason there's that treaty and that people can't go certain place, whatever, past a certain. Yeah, thought is because there's aliens, <laughs> so I'm here for that. Oh, there's aliens on there. <laughs> oh, yes. that's where we, we allowed them to settle in the yes. deepest part of Antarctica. Right. Does that also explain there's like a wall in Australia that no one's allowed to cross? Do you think the aliens are past that hey, wall? Wherever too? humans can't go, aliens aliens must exist. Be. <laughs> All right, I can get with that. I can. Yeah. <laughs> well, the funny part is. So beyond the Antarctic crust, it's funny. He said, so all these the other land masses beyond the Antarctic crust is extraterrestrial. So when someone yeah. says they come from outer space, yes, they come from out of our space. Yes. And I'm like, dude, that's that's a reach, but I like it. <laughs> oh, they gone. He's already gone. <laughs> so, so Haley, so you know what you missed was yesterday. I did, did you my, do get on with that guy? I, I did. Yeah, I did my my oh, my man. first for my second interview for my show, the one on one interviews for the fluent, and it was okay. um, and it was the flat Earth Dave, who's very popular, very popular. He's got a wonder. I might actually pay the three bucks and get his app, uh, because <laughs> it's it has all these wonderful little videos and stories, and and actually you can connect with other flat earthers like what? as well in your That's neighborhood. Awesome. Like say, hey, we got a flat Earth yeah. barbecue. Come on down. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. I need I need to sign up for this. Let's yeah, go. he makes like I was telling I was telling my wife just for he, fun, like just to just learn. for fun. He goes, look, look okay. at this lake. How is this lake perfectly still if the Earth is moving at three thousand miles an hour like this? It's called gravity. gravity. That's why. Called, <laughs> yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about, yo. Give me a break. <laughs> Hold on. There's gravity in your car, but if you are holding a cup of coffee and you take a corner, it spills out. No. That's because you're, I don't know. I should have start, oh, started this show 10 minutes ago so that we could have got this entire conversation. This is so great. I could do this all day. Oh, uh, I could. Do, yeah. I, you know what? We were supposed to go for like 45 minutes. We went for an hour and 15. And he's like, I can go more if you want. I said, you know what? I'm just going to have you back because I, 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 I'll be here all night with yeah. you. I would. I'll be I, here I, all I, night with you. That's how you get sucked in, Tone. That's what happens. You get next, sucked in. I'm and the next thing him. you know, two hours later, you're still here. And, and I don't know if you've started this or not, Jordan, but um i don't know if we're live but i actually so i did the flat earth one with him i'm i'm inviting him back because i want to hear his we didn't land on the moon theory and just so you know jay this is your fault uh -oh. actually it's my fault because you know how when we were doing we do like a conspiracy piece like a segment every week well his team saw that we did a flat earth one and they're like hey do you want to really learn about the flat earth and they connected me with him and i'm like and you know me i'm like yeah of course i want to learn more bring it up now, now you want to hook. Now, now, now you're on the hook. now did now i am going to have a barbecue uh i'm gonna go have a drink excuse me with Kyrie. we're gonna talk about the earth being flat we're gonna talk Ooh, about playing ball part-time i'm wondering if maybe i can play the games that he doesn't play like we're gonna figure something out Oh my god. You'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> oh my god. All right, are you guys ready? Oh, I yeah. thought we were live. Oh, my bad. Great if we my live. bad. I didn't know I I would not <laughs> never start it live unless you told me just to prevent any issue. Oh no, just always start live. <laughs> All right. You guys are about to go live in 5 4 3 2 And we're live. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, if you want to continue this conversation <laughs> no I, uh, all right listen I don't, let the people oh, know <laughs> actually do we want to talk about this no no J <laughs> let's take let's take a vote between the three of us do you want to keep talking about flat earth yes or no because i'm telling we'll be here for we'll be here all day because we'll because what's gonna happen is you also had this compelling way to suck people in including me and the next thing i know is an hour later i'm really now my wheels are turning and i'm thinking did we really land on the moon did that really happen and now all of a sudden an hour later we haven't gotten to the all nba team we're not even talking about the playoffs i'm still sitting here thinking to myself wait a minute all right is the earth really flat losing sleep over it yeah, yeah now i'm really now now i'm really he's, he's in my head with this is the earth really flat which i know for a fact it's not but more importantly, we do have a poll up. 
So for those 16 people who have already joined the live and who are obviously smashing the like button, we have a big dilemma. So I want to hear your take, and then I'll let Haley take it away to talk sports. But um, right here, you guys have all, you all know my hair. It goes to about down to here. I cut it. It used to be down to about here. So it's now about this high or long. Um, I've now finished shooting the show that I needed the long hair for. So Dem Ones is, I've wrapped it. Um, it's going to come out in July, the TV show, the the, com the Toronto comedy, Dem Ones. I'm going to say it one more time. So now I can do whatever I want with my hair. And so you guys know my hair normally is very, very sh short. So in the poll we have, should I cut my hair short or leave it long? <laughs> what, do, what do we think? Uh, let's start with you two. What do we think? And then we'll let the other people in the chat vote. Well, I'm what? wondering what what is your what was your typical? I mean, have you had long hair for like never, a while no, previous never. to shooting? Nope. Okay, so this is new. This is this how do is, you like? I hate like it. it. Okay. <laughs> I Just hate the it. The comfort of it. It's I all, hate it. Long There's hair, hair everywhere. It's always yeah. it's always in the sink. It's always in the mm -hmm. in the shower. I always get yelled at because I don't clean it up as thoroughly as I should. Um, yep, I always pain. have to wear it up because otherwise it's just in my face. So I absolutely hate it. But my daughter's like, I really like it, daddy. So I'm like, okay, Aww. I'll keep it a little bit longer. But now she's like, okay, you can cut it if you want. So she's ready. So no one has voted. Oh, oh there's nine votes. Wait, there's nine votes. How are we doing? So, so Haley, what do you think? Long or short? I mean, you can't tell because it's back, you know? So I think it's cool to kind of have that ability to do whatever you want with it. But I know, I believe me, I know my hair is not right. even that long and I know how much it takes to take care of it. Jay, but I think sure would be nice for this summer. Jay, I got to ask Jay because and then I'll tell you how Jay insulted <laughs> me the first time we met. Well, Tom, you can't put this up and have your hair back. You got to you got to give people options. You got to drop the hair. You can't just have. it. Yeah, off. that's yeah. true. Yeah. You got to drop the hair. Whoa. There you go. Okay. You drop the I head. don't even know if I've seen it before. <laughs> there you go. Now, just keep in mind, I, I have cut it. It used to be it used to be like to here, but now yeah. so I did I did cut it because it was going it was getting crazy. I dropped the hair. So I'm okay. actually in one of my scenes, in one of my scenes in the show, I like fling my hair back and like put it in a ponytail. Don't do that. That's not <laughs> oh my god. Flip. What? Tony, did you just flick your hair back? Is that what I just I saw? had to did do it for the show? I had to just flick the show. your hair back. I'm gonna actually send you the clip. I have that clip where I have my employee yeah. sitting in front of me, the main character in the, in the show, and like I flip my hair around and I put it into a ponytail. I'm like, this is the second time you've been late this week, and he's like, I know, but the bus <laughs> and the net and the net. So, like that. That's no. actually is that's actually a scene in the show, and now I just ruined it. So now I got to take my <laughs> these off. So okay, I'll let so Jay. So just so you guys know, Jay, I don't. It wasn't the first time we met, but Jay and I started to do Floon and Chill, and mm -hmm. there was this other show called Table for One. And it was like a, a wannabe kind of around the horn type of show. So I brought Jay on with the guys that were trying to get us to be on it. And I said, hey, do you want to be on this show? And Jay's kind of like, and I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of school here, Jay. I'm just, I'm, I'm going behind the scenes, letting everybody know. <laughs> and, just, and the other guys were all very young. And he's like, you know, I don't know if, you know, I want to be with, you know, you know, you guys are like 18, 19, 20. We're older than that. And, you know, I don't want to be the guy at the club with the ponytail. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the old 40 year old guy with the ponytail i'm like whoa he doesn't know i'm like jay man which i did and i didn't even notice that until i said it and then he turned he shows me the he shows me the man button i'm like, like whoa, whoa, all right okay. <laughs> it, was, it, was, like, it, was almost, it was almost the end of fluent so haley right to give you some context on what it was we were like what we're doing right now if you can imagine there's two other people here right and in the process yeah. of us, two other people here it's you and a bunch of like 10th graders <laughs> And yeah. you, yeah, you yeah. look and you looking around like, yeah, this is nice, but I think that I might be a little bit out of place here, right? Yeah, and you know, yeah. I, I don't want to be the chick with the caked on makeup in the club. Meanwhile, there's a chick with caked on makeup here, and you're like, whoa, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know that's if I should have said that. TikTok. You're on TikTok. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. My question before we get into it, how did that? occur both of you like what prompted you to start were you already on youtube and then you kind of transferred because of the growth or how did you get on tiktok and grow so large i started uh my best friend told me about tiktok he's like oh my kids love it and 
I'm a, I wasn't a, I'm not a social media dude. I don't have any Facebook. I don't have no Instagram. Um, yeah. What's that other one? Snapchat or yeah. Twitter. I, I only have Twitter because of Adrian Wojnarowski and Shams. That's yeah. the only reason why I got Fair. Twitter. I don't even I don't I don't even post anything on Twitter. So yeah. I don't have any social media. So he he tells me about this thing. I'm like, All right, I, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'm not really yeah. going to do anything with it. So I start scrolling through it, and this one guy I'll never forget him. He calls himself <laughs> Boom. All right, Boom is Boom. getting on it. Boom is getting on and he's talking about Jordan this, Jordan that, and you know, what did Jordan do? And then I'm not really paying much attention to it until he made a post where he said that 1986 Jordan, that team that he was on, he had help. And I was thinking, whoa, wait a minute. Oh. Orlando, I, Orla- I remember that. Orlando Woolridge. He, he talked about Orlando Woolridge, and I was like, wait a minute. Okay, stop right there, because I was around <laughs> when that team was playing, and no, he didn't. They were Oklahoma City with Jordan on the team. That's who they were. And I made a post about it. And the next thing I know, it's turning into something completely different. And then now people are, people are asking me questions and I'm just answering questions. And yeah. I'm basically kind of debunking theories. And the next thing I know, I'm now the OG. I'm like, so now I've got to keep doing this. What the hell? So, all right, this is what it is. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. And then fluent, same kind of thing for you or were you already, I mean, I feel like no, you're everywhere. Like I, you're just everywhere. So. I, you know, it's funny because I, I had no social media. The only really? thing that I was on was LinkedIn because like okay. for my, for my business and yeah. I started doing, cause of like my background and some of the people I know, I started doing like little guest spots on like ESPN radio on other sports shows. Like they'd call me in and like, ask me like five questions for five minutes and then I'd be off. And so wow. I was actually doing an automotive podcast and I was like, and I looked at myself one day, I was like, I hate this. Like, I'm, I'm so like, I don't want to talk about cars. I don't even like cars, but it's just, it's been yeah. an industry that I'd been in for 20 years. So I was like, you know, people want like, like, like with Jermaine, it's just like, people were asking me so many things about buying cars, selling cars, how to, cause that's what I knew. And I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm not, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it yeah. all day and all night. So then my wife was like, you know, you really like, like you talk sports all the time. You do all these guest spots. You get so excited when people call you up and say, Hey, can you come on? Like when they call New York ESPN radio, called me up and said, Hey, can you come on for 15 minutes? I was like, Oh my God. Oh, right. Wow. Everybody listen. She goes, why don't you yeah. just start it? Why don't you just start a sports podcast? So I was like, okay, cool. So I started just by myself. I was just giving my takes and people were listening, but no one, like no one knew. They're like, where do we find you? I'm like, what do you mean? And people would ask me, like, where do you, I go nowhere, like on the podcast, go to Apple, go to Spotify. And like, yeah. like you don't have like a Twitter, you don't. Have, and Twitter, I still suck at Twitter. No one follows my Twitter. Yeah. And I, and I said, no. Too. So I started a Twitter, a Facebook, an Instagram. And what I kept seeing on Instagram, because no one wants to see pictures of me. Right. But Instagram is pictures. Of, Look how pretty I am. No one wants to see that. Maybe and so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't have the hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, oh, yeah. and, and so and then I kept seeing these TikTok videos showing up kind of little clips of them on IG. I was like, what is this? And the kids are like, oh, it's this, you know, dancing app and people are getting millions of views. And on my show, I actually interviewed a girl, Jade Vincent, who's got like millions of followers on TikTok for like doing dancing or whatever. Right? And she goes, oh, you should totally like she connected to me on LinkedIn trying to get like a business side, go like a marketing business going. And yeah. so she's like, oh, you should totally start a TikTok and just talk sports. I'm like, no, who's going to watch, listen to me talk sports on TikTok? So I went on and I did a couple of them and they were horrible. No, no views at all. Oddly enough, we got to thank Boom, man. So then Boo, I see a Boom video talking about Jordan or no, I think it was Clyde Drexel had no left hand. You never see him do a layup <laughs> with a left hand. And that was Jordan's best competition. He sucks. So I was like, yeah, I go, I'm pretty positive. I've seen Clyde with a left hand. And don't I just go look and boom, 92 finals, beating Jordan off the dribble and going up with his left hand. I'm like, really? boom, here's his left hand. And same kind of thing. And then people were like, oh, ask me questions. Like, and then right. I start, and then the whole sports fluent thing, they were like, people were saying some dumb stuff. I'm like, okay, I got to teach these guys something. And I get in trouble. People love Jay. They hate me. So, it, it, you know, whatever. It works. It works. Hey, you have, everybody has their, you know, their lovers and haters. So that's just okay. part of how it goes. But. I do got to say, I do have to say something, Haley, though, because in the chat, they're asking who you are. So you might want to just reintroduce yourself because hopefully they know me and they know Jay. So we should introduce the moderator. The and. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, my name's Haley. I'm the and, yes. Um, But I'm a TikToker as well. I have about 
28,000 on TikTok. I've been doing it for like seven or eight months by now. So it's been a while. It's been a lot of fun. Um, built a little community on there. Um, you know, sometimes I give my takes, sometimes I just do <laughs> funny videos or duets, but it's been so much fun. Um, but now I'm kind of, it's, I think it's a good way to kind of like, not only practice, uh, just speaking on these things, but also it's a little mini resume when you do go for, you know, jobs in the future. I mean, some of them, not all of them, but mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just been a lot of fun. Um, but now I'm trying to kind of work my way into working with you gentlemen, uh, podcasting, um, cause I'm going to school to be a sports reporter. So once I graduate, then I can kind of leap off the edge and do a little bit more. Um, but for now I'm just, <laughs> And I'm yes, so. J JD reminds everybody the links for Adam I League Sports underscore Fluent and Chilltown Hoops yes. are in the description yeah, yeah. of this video. So don't forget to check that out and give us all a follow. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Six, 60 40, by the way, is the cut hair. 60 cut 40, leave it. So, <laughs> okay. all right. Well, there you go. So Something on Tuesday, <laughs> if, the, if, the, if it stays this way, be, be prepared. Yep. That's the final thing. 60 cut 40, leave it. So Ooh. we're cutting it, guys. Um, I will go do that tomorrow. Next on Tuesday, you'll see a uh, you'll see it short. There we go. Okay. Well, I was um, I wasn't let's... kidding. I was going to do whatever the chat said. I was I'm I'm for real. All right. I'm excited. We'll we'll be ready for that debut. So as we start the show, um, I was just thinking we could just go through some of the the playoffs. We watched two games since we last time mm -hmm. met. Uh, so we'll. I mean, neither, honestly, neither game was great. Uh, Warriors, Mavs kind of came back a bit. But if you want to break down a little bit fluent and give us a quick take, quick little take on both Ooh. of those games, and then we'll jump into the rest of the show. Well, let's, let's start with the one that just is so infuriating. Like, we thought, we thought Miami would come back and play well. Yeah. And you had Kyle Lowry... Like when people criticize him in Toronto and say, oh, he doesn't show up in the playoffs, you can't play 25 minutes and have zero field goals. And I think one rebound, one assist, like that's, you are the veteran leader of that team, right? But I know, I know he's hurting. I know, but I know that everybody's hurting. I get it. Everybody's hurting in the playoffs. As a team, you can't shoot what, 35%, 20% from, or 13%, whatever they shot, horrible from three. You're not winning a playoff game against anybody. You're not winning a game against anybody like that. So I was really disappointed at, at how Miami came out. Kudos to Boston. Give their defense credit. Give their game plan credit, right? You, I don't want to just put it all on Miami being playing garbage. Um, but Boston, yeah, listen, we all picked Boston to win the series. We, we thought they were the deeper, younger, more talented team. And they're showing that. I will say this. We keep talking about Tatum as being the next superstar. Jalen Brown had a better game than Tatum again. So I, I think he's we, had more, a couple yeah, more consistent that's why I say, games uh, get, than Tatum. We might, we might have to be talking about Jalen Brown because he seems to be yeah. every bit of the capable offensively and defensively as Jason Tatum. Boston might have a really good problem. They might have two star slash superstar players, which if they can keep them together, whew, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be a problem. As far yeah. as the Mavs, as far as the Mavs and Warriors, um, I'm not surprised that the Mavs came out and played the way they did. They've shown that all kind of playoffs long that when their backs against the wall, they come out and play well. I will say this. I think Steve Kerr may have cost the Warriors a sweep by putting in his starters when they were dead, when they closed it. I think they closed it to within mm. eight with, with three minutes left. You reward those guys. You were, you say you brought us back. You stay in. Yeah. Because the second 100%. they started bringing Steph and those guys back in, the lead balls again. Those guys were playing, that bench was playing with so much energy with, hey, we've got nothing to lose that I just, I, I just would have let them, I would have let, let them close it out. I just would have let them yeah. close it out and see what happened because they're the ones that did the work. I hate that. Could you imagine? Just think of, you know, whether it's you're at school or at work. Someone does like 90% of the work and then, you know, your boss comes in and says, oh, hey, great. I'll take that and takes all the credit for it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I would have been, oh, that, 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 that really bothered me. That bothered me. Well, just real quick. I think that like, I think his mindset must have just been, well, we aren't going to win this game. Let's put in these guys. And then when there's a shot, they're like, well, let's actually switch it up. And I, and I get it in a sense, but I a hundred percent agree with you. Like those guys got their win or lose. They get to finish it out. Let them do it. 
either it's good practice and imagine what that win would do for their confidence as well. Um, so I, I agree. It, it was a, I think that whole day though, just with everything that happened with the shooting. And then of course with, uh, yeah. you know, the rain and the arena, it was just a tough day all around. So it was good to see the, I don't know, the, it was just a tough day all around. Why don't we trust history tone? And, and the reason why I'm asking you this question is because when we see it, we're so surprised about it. You being from Toronto, you know this better than any of us. If I'm not mistaken, Tone, do we remember Kyle Lowry in the 15-16 in the playoffs? Did he not go down in history of having the worst shooting percentage of a guard in the history of the playoffs? Did he not do that? So with that being said, are we? why are we surprised when he goes 0 for 6 or he has another bad shooting game? We're not, I'm not surprised at that at all. The problem that I'm having is, is that him, Str- him, Struis, and Victor Oladipo go one for 22 from the floor, mm-hmm. including 0 for 15 on the long ball. Now, that works when you're a great defensive team. The problem is, is that you're going to have to score. Miami has that kind of team where their offense is generated primarily from their defense. If Buckets isn't going, none of those other guys are giving them anything, period. Even when they're rolling. Their offense, their offense is predicated on their defense generating offense for them. So you get a team that's more talented offensively, like the Boston Celtics, you're not going to be able to hold them down the entire game. Let's not forget, you had them 26 in a hole at one point, and they cut it to two. So you're not going to be able to hold that team down the entire game. You held them down in the first half the way you did, but at some point, and you know I stand on this tone as a, as, as, as just – Thinking about teams playing defense, being defenders, you have to guard in the playoffs. But with being able to guard, you have to score. And if you can't score, it's like a pitcher. I can throw strikes all day. We got to hit the ball eventually, Tone. We can't just keep throwing strikes all day. So, and in the same idea with the Dallas Mavericks, that team is gen- that team's offense is generated from Luca. If Bullock, if Kleber, and Finney Smith aren't hitting shots. They're not getting anything from those guys. We're talking about a crew. Yes, we're talking about a crew on Tuesday. They went 12 for 20 on the long ball. That's completely different from Kleber. Excuse me. That's completely different from Kleber and Bullock going 0 for 12 two nights before that. So we go from them hitting no shots to going 60%. Now that opens up so much more offense for Luka. Add that to the fact that they did a good job on Luka. Todd, I know you see the 30 and the 14 from Luka, but he shot under 40%. He shot. He, he barely shot thirty percent on the three, and they made it hard on him. I think this mm-hmm. series is over. I think that they end it tonight. I think that the, I think that that Boston series is over. I think that they end that on Friday. Yep, I I, I don't disagree with either any of those points. Um, I said it about Kyle Lowry. I said it about DeRozan. It's been like, at what point do you? They keep telling you who they are. You just don't want to believe who they are. They are. Yeah. Who they like they're always be who they are. And so I just yeah, I'm I'm disappointed that it got to this point. But listen, Warriors, Celtics, that's who we're gonna mm-hmm. see in the I think that's who we're gonna see in the final. That's pretty clear. Um yeah. and there was a point that I wanted to make and I can't remember it, so I'm I'm trying to fill time until I remember I thought but that I, but I, I don't thought that- I thought that Derek White and Al Hoffett, I thought those two guys really held it together for the Celtics in the first half because the Heat did a great job on Tatum yeah. and Brown. They wow. did a really good job on those guys in the first half. We're talking, about, we're talking about two guys that went two for 16, forcing those guys into tough shots, making those guys guard, which is the most important thing, making those guys guard, forcing them into tough shots. And then eventually they got it going, and Hoffett and – Hoffett and, and Derek White were able to help them out offensively. Tone, I can't say enough about Robert White. I can't say enough about what he brings to that team defensively because he completely switches up what Miami is doing offensively. When you got a man in the middle like that who, 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 who rim protects, who rebounds, well, now they can't go downhill like they would normally want to as opposed to when he's out. Now that offense is completely different. It's almost like, and I hate to say this two-tone because I really dig Bam, but Bam looks at Robert Williams like a bigger brother. Like, I don't know if I can go after this dude. When he, <laughs> I, I, and, and when he's not there – it's like the bully of the neighborhood is gone when Robert Williams is not there. Yeah. Bam just basically can do whatever he wants. I, I remembered what I was going to say. It's because when you said it's in, it's good to defend, but you got to be able to score too. And it, you know, we all we all heard the saying: defense wins championships. And that used to be very, very, very true. 
And I'm not saying that it's not true anymore. Still is. Still is. It still is, but it's changed because now it's defense. I don't think defense wins championships anymore. I think situational defense wins championships. And the difference is you have a team, you brought up Toronto. You have a team like Toronto that's great on defense, can't score. You have a team like Miami, great on defense. Sometimes they struggle to score. Mm. Whereas you have a team like, I know Boston's a bad example because they were the number one defensive rated team. But if you have a team that can score, that can play defense when they have to, that team, I think, nowadays is going to have more success than just that defensive team that, you know, like we said, Miami, Toronto were teams that we were like, listen, I know they're going to be good defensively. They've put together this like really great roster mm-hmm. of defenders, but where's the scoring going to come from? Right. And that's the problem because <clears throat> yeah, they might hold Boston to 90. That mm-hmm. should be a win. The problem right. is they only score 80 right. and they lose. So you have to, so I think it's, it's shifted from defense wins to, Offense with situational defense wins. Well, wait me. a minute, though. Well, it's, uh, that's what I was. That's what I wanted to ask you, Tone. When you talk about when you talk about situational defense, that means that we only play defense when no, no, we no, have no. to. You play no, no. You play. De- you could play like you don't have to play. Let me let me explain it further. You don't have to play s- a- elite defense all the time. You have to play right. good defense or really good defense, but you're right. able to step it up when you need to. So, like last three minutes of the game, right? You've played really good defense. Now you play. Now you shut them down. Like you know what I mean? Like you have that extra level of defense. If that well, makes when you well, it, it, it does. But with that being said, we still have to be at a high level. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially you when we play good. Sp- yeah, yeah. You can't so be when trash. You, up against, you can't be trash right. and then turn it on. No, no, no. Right. No. So when you go up against a Miami Heat team that you know they pred- they're predicated on getting their points and transitioning off defense, but they also shoot the long ball at a high rate. And when you hold them to fourteen percent in a quarter, well, what that does is that translates to later on in the game. Where now, if we held them to 14%, these guys are now looking at the basket different. They're not looking at the basket going, well, I'm going to keep shooting. I'm going to keep shooting. Well, if if a guy like Duncan Robinson went 0 for 4, is he going to keep shooting? Or is the basket starting to look smaller now? Of course it looks smaller in the fourth quarter than it did in the second, even though I still wasn't scoring in the second. So when you got a great defensive team like Boston, who is where they are in the second quarter, it's really important to maintain that. Or even raise that. What we can't do is we can't go under that. And I think that's where Boston excels. You you said something that I can't explain to people who don't who have never like don't play ball, but like you said, the, the basket seems to get smaller. And I keep telling people and I'm trying to explain it to people, and it's just like when you start to miss the bat the, the, we, the basket doesn't change that, but like it feels like it gets smaller, and then all of a sudden you start to make shots. And I remember Jordan once saying uh, that game against Portland where he's hitting all those threes, he's like, the baskets just look like a big old bucket. <laughs> and like, I just felt like if I just put it anywhere near, it was going in because it does, it, it gets bigger. So when you, like you said, when you shoot 14%, well, now it's like, oh, I got to hit it perfect or it's not going in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, it's it's just funny how that that dynamic works. Yeah, where absolutely. Once you start making them, it's like you just throw up anything and you, you just know it's going in, which is crazy. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think we had all kind of had a sense coming out of this series like Boston was gonna you know come out but unfortunately I always root for the underdog and I really wanted heat I wanted it to go to seven at least you know I wanted it to be a close series but who knows I thought it's that, not over time, I, I, time I thought that this was going to be a six game series I, I did but I also looked at a Boston Celtic team that was more yeah. balanced offensively right. and I looked at this I looked at this Miami Heat team that you know when your offense is predicated on you getting turnovers well that works yeah. against lesser teams. When you're playing yeah. against teams that have better offense and you rely solely on getting uh, on getting turnovers and getting out in transition, that's going to be a problem, especially when you've only got one guy who's primarily doing all the scoring. That's going to be a problem yeah. moving forward. And that's what's happening with Miami. Yeah. Well, was Listen. Miami uh, – Boston was number one defensive team. Was Miami mm-hmm. two? Yes, they or were. Or was Miami yeah. – and then but, I think – Miami no, was Miami was Miami number was, four in the regular yeah, season and number two in the playoffs. Five. Yeah, yeah. they were number yeah. four in the regular season four. and number two in yeah, they're number four in the, in the regular season, number two in the playoffs. Yeah, it's it's it, it's you know we never have full strength teams. I you know that's why I hate when yeah. like you bring up the injuries, but I hate when people say, well, they only won or they only lost because of this or that injury. No, mm-hmm. that's part of the yeah. game. You're gonna have those. But when yeah. I look at these two teams, if even fully healthy, if they were mm-hmm. all perfectly. I still think Boston has the better offensive and defense, the better spacing, the better. They're just yeah. the they're the they're the 
they're the more talented roster. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. That's why I'm not surprised because, like we said, I think we both said Celtics and six. So I think that's what ends up happening. It didn't and, happen. It didn't happen in the way we thought it would happen. Mm-hmm. But I still think it's that's what's going to end up being it. And to add to your point, Tone, I looked at the Boston Celtics Milwaukee series and I thought that the winner of that winner series of that. Yeah. was going to win the Eastern yeah. Conference Championship because yeah. I'm looking at Milwaukee and I'm thinking if I'm Boston, well, we ain't going to see nobody that's tougher than Giannis. We're not going to see anybody that's tougher than Giannis and Drew Holiday and have to deal with anybody like that. We look at that Miami offense and those guys weren't as tough as those guys. And defensively, as good as they were, we handled Milwaukee who – who arguably had the best defensive player in the game in Giannis. And and I think Drew Holiday, I still think Drew Holiday is the best perimeter defender in the game. I do think he's better than Marcus Smart. I, I know I get a lot of heat for that, mm. but I do think that he's a better perimeter defender than Marcus Smart. But better than the Boston, defensive player of the year? Better, yeah. I mean, hold on. Now let me ask you this question, Tom. <laughs> re, re, rewind the clock back to 1996. Is Gary Payton a better defender than Jordan? In what year? 1996. Yeah. The year, the, the year, yeah, and, and just just so you know, Gary Payton won a defensive play the year that year. Oh, he's a better defender. Um, that year, mm, nah, <laughs> in '96, uh, yeah, yeah, because that's the same logic as saying, "Yo, okay, I won the league MVP, so I'm the best player in the game." Well, are you? Mm-hmm. I mean, just because. Just, uh, Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that whack criteria for MVP. Well, actually, let me pause you both here because this is a good segue into what we're going to talk about next. Because you know, the media can have so much impact on voting for Mm -hmm. these positions and these awards and so we're going to talk about the all nba teams next Mm -hmm. i'm going to first read off uh all three of them then i'm going to get your opinions and then we're going to talk about do you think the voters and that whole system is a good system Mm -hmm. um and how maybe the media has impacted that so i'll start off with the first team uh which is luca book uh, Giannis, Tatum, Jokic. Mm-hmm. Uh, second team is Steph, uh, Ja, Damar, KD, and Joel. Mm-hmm. And then third team is CP3, Trey, LeBron, uh, Pascal Siakam, and then Carl Anthony Towns. So Tone loves that, by the way. That Siakam I pick. Love, Tone, love Tone, Tone loves I, that, by the way. I love it. <laughs> I was surprised. I'm happy I for him. It. I mean... He, yeah, I was let me let me just let me just hold on. I, I, I love that Aww. pig. I love that pig. Yeah. We keep this right here. <laughs> yeah, he I, I, I think he deserved it. it. I think he did deserve. It. I, do. I do. I agree. Um. So, anyways, are there any names that just pop out at you and say, "Whoa!" Like that? Those should be switched. Uh, that doesn't belong there. Or are you pretty comfortable with every single team? Well, the first thing that I want to say, okay, so you, you go, Tom. Go ahead. No, I was just, I was going to say, because we did, we did our first, second, and third teams. Um, oh, you did. At the end of the regular season. At the end of the regular season. And yeah. I feel they like similar? They're, they're, they're very similar. Like I had Jokic, Giannis, Luka, Tatum, and I, and I, I had Ja. But I, I admittedly said, I just, I'm a big fan of Ja, so I put him there. No um, <laughs> the second team, I had Embiid. And then I had Booker instead of Jaw, obviously. Steph, Durant, and I feel I had Le- LeBron instead of DeMar. Mm-hmm. And then I had Carl Anthony Towns, DeMar DeRozan, Chris Paul, Trey Young, and Pascal Siakam. So it's I, it's all the same players, just yeah. a couple of minor tweaks on my end. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not angry about anyone. I don't think anybody got it. You know, there wasn't like a huge snub. I don't I don't feel. I feel yeah. like based on what they did this season, based on, listen, part of it is the media narrative. Yeah, the, those are the right yeah. 15 guys. Well, to, to start, I don't understand why DeMar DeRozan was listed as a power forward. He's been in the league 13 years. As a shooting guard. Th- yeah, that doesn't make sense. 10 of the 13 years, he's been listed as a two guard. That's number one. Number two, I had DeRozan first team in, in front of Book. If you look at the yeah. numbers, they're very similar. Book went 27, 5-5. Five and five. DeMar went 28 Five and five. Um, I think the disparity was on the defensive side of the basketball. Uh, mm. DeRozan played eight more games than him. Not only did DeRozan play eight more games than him, he had them at the top of the Eastern Conference, holding that team together with glue and tape, right? So Caruso was out of the lineup. Ball was out of the lineup. Williams was out of the lineup. Zach Levine was in and out of the lineup. And they were still at the top of the Eastern Conference, primarily because of him. Book went out of the lineup, and he was missing games, and they were still rolling. So yeah. I I actually I actually had 
DeRozan at the top. I had him in. I had him as a first teamer. Second team. I, I'm, I'm can really I pause, happy. Can about I pause you there for a sec? Can I pause you and ask you a question? Because I think part of, again, the media voting was when Chris Paul went out. We all thought Phoenix would kind of drop out of first, or not maybe not drop out of first, but slide. And Book kind of held it together with Chris Paul. Do you think that maybe is why they bumped him up to the first team? Because it was at the end of the season when they're paying more attention. Well, not only did it bump him up, was we talking about Book at all during the season being in the league MVP votes? At no point were we talking about him. I don't think. But all of a sudden, we get into the last three weeks of the season, and now Book is in the conversation for being league MVP. Now, all they had to do with that group, because they were already seven games ahead in first place. All they had to do was go 500, and they still keep that number one seed. And well, they did that. Blame, blame Haley's guy for that. Because it was Dame Lillard saying Book should be MVP. That's why he started getting MVP. All of that, yeah. and, and Book, Book is talking about – I mean, I'm sorry. Dave is talking about Book being MVP. Absolutely. The guy that I'm the guy that I'm particularly happy about making first team, and you and I have had this conversation, Tony, I'm really happy about Jason Tatum being first team. I thought that he was going to be second team, but I'm, I'm actually happy that he made first team because what he just suggests to me is he suggests that generational talent, and the more I watch him, he just looks like he's going to be around for a long time. I, I'm, 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 he looks like he's just one of those guys who we're going to have to get used to seeing him because he's going to be around for a long time. I had James second team, and that's because DeMar DeRozan was listed as a forward. I don't even know why DeMar DeRozan was listed as a forward. I had Ja. I had – Trey Young ahead of Ja. I'm having a really difficult time putting a dude that's almost 30 and 10, third team all NBA. I'm having a really difficult time. With that. that sounds <laughs> nuts to me, but that's just me. I, I I know how dynamic Ja was, and he missed all of those games, and they still were rolling without him. But when I look at what Trey Young did, and not just his splits, how good he was for that Atlanta team. Like I said, Tom, I'm having a difficult time. A dude being third team all NBA that was almost 30 and 10. That like, do you remember that? Remember that song as a kid? One of these things is not like the other. So yeah. when, you at, when you look at the third team, right? Cat, uh-huh. Ron, with Chris Paul, with Pascal Siakam. Based on this season alone, you're like, yeah, those four make sense together. And then it's like Trey. Right. Whoa, Trey. Yeah. Like, right. Trey like, <laughs> no. Trey this season well, played a lot better than those guys. So. Yeah. And I always felt like, and and I always felt like looking at Cat on the third team. I, and you and I have also had this conversation, Tone. I always felt like looking at Cat. That's Rudy. Cat, that was Cat's spot. Only reason why Cat's not on the team because Minnesota was trash. Coincidentally, and I'm not a guy who I'm not a guy who believes in coincidences. All of a sudden, the Minnesota the Minnesota Timberwolves make the playoffs, and who's on the All NBA team? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. How about so, that? So you don't think you don't think Bam or Rudy got robbed because those are the two no, I do not. I, I hear mm-hmm. no. or I've been hearing since this came out. We're talking about a guy in Minnesota who was 23 and 12 for like four straight years. For like four straight years, he's 23 and 12. And the reason why he wasn't on the All-NBA team is because Minnesota is whack. Okay? They are absolutely whack. So, and I do have to mention, which I'm also happy about, you, you, you are aware that Giannis is the fourth straight year he's been unanimously named first team All-NBA. That's the first time in 50 years that a guy can say that. That includes Jordan, right? That includes Magic. That includes Bird. That includes Shaq. That includes Bryant. Nobody else in the last 50 years can say that they were first team All NBA, a unanimous pick, four straight years. So, so since you brought that up, and I know it's four straight years, but since you brought that up, I, you know, I like doing my fluent trivia. Mm-hmm. So, four first team All NBA, four first team All Defense, two MVPs, mm-hmm. a Defensive Player of the Year, and an NBA champion. How many players in the history of the NBA have those five things? Four of them. So you got you got all four, five, all, all five, all, of those. All, all, all five of those. Four yeah. first teams. The so um, four first team, four first team All NBA, four mm-hmm. first team All Defense, two mm-hmm. MVPs, a Defensive Player of the Year, and an NBA championship. Okay, so that would be Jabbar, uh, no. Jordan. Four, four first. Oh, you talking about in a row? No, just. Are you, uh, all five, all five of those things, yes. Okay, because because Jabbar has four first team All NBAs. Jabbar Jabbar does not have a defensive player of the year. That's correct. You, you you're absolutely right about that. So that's not true. So defensive player of the year. Okay, so Jordan. Actually, when I think about it, it's just Jordan. And and now Giannis. And Giannis. That's it. That's wow. it. It's just that's yeah, the two. That's, that's it. It's the just Jordan and Giannis. Giannis. Just came into is that mm-hmm. him and Jordan wow. are the only two in NBA history to that's have. That's it. Crazy. That's it. 
Nobody right. else. It's just Jordan. Mm-hmm. And I have a That's feeling from impressive. here on out, he's just going to keep breaking records, keep breaking records. He's he the best player in the game, and, and, and I, I stand yeah. on that. There's nobody who can you, – you, you, can, you can make an argument for other guys, but I said this before the season started, Giannis is the best player in the game, and I stand on that. If he stays oh, yeah. at this level for like five more years, we're going to have some real tough discussions about Giannis. Yeah. Well, ask really yourself tough. this, Tone, and you, Tone, is an advocate of this. I don't Tone. like this. Yeah, I know. Tone hates this. Tone hates if, if you if you want to get Tone blood pressure up, <laughs> ask him about a guy in the top ten that's playing right now. Ask him to put a guy in the top twenty that's playing right now. You will get Tone's blood pressure through the roof. But really? you figure over the next five years, right? Let, let's say five, six years. If Giannis keeps this up, that'll be ten years sustained at doing this. Which means that over the next, he'll be thirty-two. We have to start having this conversation, yeah. and we got to have a serious, serious conversation. conversation. We're not just going to have a conversation. Well, let's talk about y'all. No, he, that means because he has start everything looking else. at some of these guys. If he get, he has everything else. If he just keeps his stats up and gets, you know, maybe another ring or two, because he mm-hmm. has all the accolades already, yep. right? So it's it's gonna. Uh, I don't know. Not for yet. me, Haley. You don't know this. For me, ten years. If you don't have at least ten years of kind of peak, I, yeah. I'm not even counting. Like that's why when people bring up you know, T-Mac or um, Grant Hill. I'm like, did they have 10 years of peak? No, no. get out of yeah. here. Get out. If you can't do it for 10 years, that's my minimum. Um, okay. Heck, that would actually be my minimum for the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame would be nice. You could walk through it and be open spaces. But anyways, another conversation for another day. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point to kind of vet who is and who isn't. Um, but I would say, yeah, I think, honest, in a few years, we're going to have to Discuss that. Do you have LeBron in your top ten, right? He's he's the only only active player right. that that's right. in there because Haley, I had to twist his arm. Man, you know how many times me and this dude go and I had to I twist watch, his I arm. I had to twist this. I had to twist really? this dude's arm, and not just not not just twist his arm. Only because he's still playing. Like if he wasn't playing, this wouldn't yeah. be a discussion. Like but if he retired playing, tomorrow, I'd be like, oh, he's oh, a, like yeah. Okay. It's just, I don't I, can, want, I understand that. I want to wait for it. But after nineteen seasons. And the way I look at it is there's nothing he can do, positive or negative, that's really going to change. Like, where's yeah. he going to go from here, right? So, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, all right, fine. Like, the way I look at it, like, okay, I'm going to use a football reference. So I have someone, player's choice guy, Dub, who ke- you know keeps putting Patrick Mahomes as his number five quarterback all time. And I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. He's only played. What has he been in the league three years? He's been in the league four? five years, and he's four? only played has for really? four of them. Yeah, yeah he's four only years, played for it? four of them. Five and years I, now? Yeah, and I get it. He's he's done amazing in his four years. But I go, what if he goes yeah. out the next five years, and he stinks, and he's throwing more interceptions yeah. than touchdowns, and, and, you know, he fumbles the ball. Well, now he's Dwight Howard. I, I, he's my best example. He's Dwight yeah. Howard, who came out, and we're like, oh, Superman, the greatest center ever. Oh, no, not so much. So that's yeah. why I just – that's why, I, you know, I – I, that's why I don't even consider it until kind of year seven, eight, nine, but I want 10. And then I don't want to rank them until they're done. But again, yeah. when you've gone 19 years, I figure yeah. I know who you are by now. I, I hope. Well, uh, so, Tone, I can, yeah. so I can rank it. So I can rank You guys know, and Tone, you know this better than anybody because you and I have been talking a lot about it. You know how serious I take being an all NBA performer. All you know NBA, how serious yeah. I take that. So, when I see these teams come out and I see these guys, there's a difference between, and I hear this a lot, which burns me. You know, there's no difference between being a third team or a second team. Yes, it yes, is. There is. There's a huge yes, there difference is. between being a second and a first team All NBA performer. Because when we're talking about all time greats, one of the first things we talk about is, yo, I'm an eight time first team All NBA performer, yes. as opposed to I'm a third team All NBA performer five right. times. By saying, That's- by saying, by saying it doesn't matter. So what you're telling me is I can take Kareem and say he's not top five, he's top 15. Are you okay with that? No. Le- Hold on, I'll take LeBron. LeBron, LeBron's not one or two, he's top 15. There's a big difference between being top 15 and top five. Yes, it is. Right? It's so not the that's, same thing. that's how I look at the, the it's first. It's not the same team. thing. Yeah. That's, that's why when these all NBA teams come out. Is Siakam the same? Who, who's on the first? I forget who was the forwards on the first team. Giannis, uh, and Tate, Giannis, Giannis and Tatum. Yeah. Is Siakam on the same level as Giannis and Tatum? No. no. That's mm. why he's and, he's, and, and he's really good. Don't and get me really wrong. Good. Yeah, really Siakam good. is really good. That's why I take being an all-league performer very seriously. Because when you're an all-league performer, I'm the best of the best. And when I'm a first-team all-league performer, that means especially when I'm doing it at a consistent level. As opposed to when I'm an all-NBA performer, I'm, I just... 
I made the All NBA team once. I first time, first team All NBA means I'm either if I'm a center, I'm the best at my position, mm-hmm. or forwards and guards. I'm one of the top two in the league. Yes, like in that's the entire league. That's, that's big. Huge. That's big. In yeah. the entire league, absolutely. And if I'm doing it at a consistent basis, that means that I was this for a long time. I wasn't just this for a year or two years. Because once again, Tom, we've seen guys like, for example, Julius Randle. Julius Randle is a B player who had an A year. Isaiah Thomas in 2016-17. He was a B player who had an A year. But when I get a guy like Carl Malone, who I was first team All-NBA for 11 straight years, you know what that means? I'm the guy at this position. Over a decade, I was that guy. I take that stuff very seriously. Well, and, and, very think about, serious. and I think about it this way, too. If you think about first team, even first team, second team, you might argue who's the first, second, or third best forward mm-hmm. in the league, right? Sure, we'll have that debate. But when you're at the six, so when you're third team, so you're the sixth best forward in the league, there's probably seven, eight, nine, ten. There's probably That's four right or five there. other people that might be interchangeable. That's so it's right like there. you're as close to 10 as you are to six, but you're, I guarantee you, so Siakam. Siakam's closer to 10 than he is to three. Yeah, there's a gap. There's in terms a huge of talent, gap. right? So yeah, there's a huge that, gap. that's the part I want to make clear. Well, you yeah. just said it, Tom. When you look at when, when you look at Siakam at six, I mean, how much how big how much how much how much further is the gap between him and another forward as opposed to how much is the gap between him and Kevin Durant? Yeah, exa- exactly. That's exactly. He's I feel like Brian Scalab- Brian Scalabrini. I'm closer to LeBron than you are to me. Like that right. is- <laughs> that's not the same thing, man. It's not. It is not the same thing. Absolutely not. So well, and depending on the season that everyone has injuries and all these other things can play into it. So for KD, he he could have well that that that's well, he still played fifty six. KD games, versus so, yeah. Giannis. But you know what I mean. Like yeah. another year KD might have a better Look, if K- if KD plays eighty two games. It's probably mm-hmm. him in the first team and, and Tatum second that's team. That's what I'm but thinking. That, but then you're but still you can still point, have that even conversation, know. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But moving on to um, the younger guys, because we just talked about kind of the older generation and mm-hmm. where that's going. But now we have this whole new generation of young guys who are playing just – they're cra- insane, like you were saying. Joel uh, Tatum is going to be here awesome. for – years to come and i think we all know it we're also i personally i i mentioned this a little bit i i didn't love tatum i like him i like who he is i think he's you know a, a star power player um but now he's actually proving because he had this rap that maybe he was kind of a playoff bust you know he struggled in the playoffs previously mm-hmm. but now he's showing up and showing out and so i want to do a comparison of luca tatum book Mm -hmm. Because they all three are some of the best young guys. They made it Mm -hmm. into the playoffs. Some of them further than others. Luke and Tatum, Mm -hmm. we still have here with us. Um, But I want to just break down where we see them going in the future. Rankings, whatever, if we want to do that system. Mm -hmm. um, Or just who's going to be around the longest and make the biggest impact on the league if you want to start chill. Well, Tone and I have had this conversation. When I look at Luca, I think that Luca's ceiling, he's closer to his ceiling than all three of these guys because Luca's been playing pro basketball since he's 16 years old. So there's really not much more that I'm going to see from Luca in terms of development. I think he is who he is. Now it's just a matter of getting guys around him to just enhance, not just enhance his production, but to continue his production because. Luca is already who he is. I mean, his three ball is not going to get much better than it already is. His ball handling is not going to get much better than it already is. He could do a better job in taking care of his body. When we talk about a guy who's going to be great long term, I look at Luca and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if Luca continue continuing how he is in terms of his body. I don't know if he's going to be around that long. I don't know if he's going to hold up for another 12 years, considering if he doesn't take care of his body. But in terms of a talent. I don't think that there's much more that I'm going to get. He went 28, 9, and 9 this year. I mean, how much more am I going to get from Luca? Am I going to get 37, 11, and, and 12? I doubt that very seriously. But we're, we're, going, we're, we're around year, what, I think we're in year four with Luca, And I've always, I stand on the logic that by year five, this is who you are. And no matter where else, you're going to have some better seasons later on. But by year five, this is what you should continuously expect from this guy. I mean, we look at Steph Curry, prime example. Curry had some better seasons later on. But in year five, Curry was 20, he was 24, 7, and 4. 
Curry, for his career, he's 24, 6, and 5. So that's who these guys are. So when I look at Book, I think Book is who he is. I think I think Book is in year 7. I think Book is who he is. I think he's going to be one of the better two guards in the game for a long time. Now, when you talk about a guy like Jason Tatum, I think Jason Tatum is still developing. I think that there's – I don't think that he's hit his ceiling yet. I think he's still – Going up, I think that once the game slows down for him and he gets that in-between, that mid-range game, when he gets that down, I think that we're going to have a serious conversation about him being the best player in the game because I see the commitment on the defensive side of the basketball. I'm the most excited about him more than any of the guys that we've talked about. Don't get me wrong. I'm a huge book guy. I dig book. I dig book for his ability yeah. to score the basketball and his ability to just go at guys. Same thing with Luca, But I think, I think that a more complete player is Tatum. And it's going to be. Yeah. Well, I just want to interrupt you because how many years has Tatum been in the league? Is it? He came in with Luca. No, he, no, he came in. No. He came in. He came in the year before Luca. I'm sorry. Year before. This is yeah. year five. This so is year five, five that we're five. in. Yeah. He came in okay, the year before so, Luca. So this is Tatum's. I mean, if to your argument or what you were saying, it, this is his year to prove. So, and which he has. So he's mm-hmm. following that. Um, also, I was thinking. I think it was earlier yesterday what if Luca just comes back after the summer just like rip what if he does put work into his body into what he's eating into his diet into his routines and he comes back just I mean I know his body type isn't gonna be like a Jason Tatum but he could come back do you think that would change the longevity of his play and and well, his ability to up those numbers consistently I'm glad you mentioned that Haley because I'm not looking for you to be ripped if you remember not this season it just passed last season we saw Joker come back. He was minus 40 pounds. And yeah. he looked great. He wasn't sliced up, but he looked yeah. great. And what did end, what ended up happening? He won the league MVP. So he's, yeah. he took he took better care of himself. Same idea with Luca. When I look at Luca, I'm thinking about a guy who, if you could take better care of your body, you'll last longer and your play will last longer. One of the main reasons why a lot of these guys, James Harden is a prime example, why he's basically fell off a cliff, because James Harden was just showing up for years. And he was showing up for years, and it showed in the playoffs when he started to break down. If you take better care of your body, which you should be doing that anyway as a professional athlete, you'll last longer, and your play will show. So I think that I'm looking at a guy like Luca. If he could take a little bit better care of his body, I think that he'll last longer, and I think that his play will show. I agree. Tone? Let me me start by saying book, book, people no let me just say it book doesn't belong in this conversation i I appreciate what he does offensively i i I like you know uh, blah 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 he's not in this conversation Mm. he is not he is not the same caliber of player i don't believe for his career that jason tatum will be and that luca Mm. is today like if i were to rank these guys right now luca's one tatum's two and book is like seven I just, I don't think he's in the same class. Score, listen, people love to look at scoring and they're going to say, oh, but yeah, yeah, I know. But that's all, like, he's very, I don't want to say one dimensional, but he's a scorer. That's what he is. And that's great. Mm -hmm. It's very important. It sells tickets. People like looking at it. But I don't think he's in the same conversation as these two guys. So let's eliminate Book. And I appreciate Book, but let's Mm -hmm. kick him up. So right now we're looking at Luca and we're looking at Tatum. Mm -hmm. Luca has been a professional since he was seven. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he came into the league as a professional, right? He's been playing against grown men like his whole life. So he came in ready to play. And we saw that. We saw that day one. If you look at his stats, even from his rookie season to year two, like, okay, maybe they, they got better, but he's still like, he came in ready to play. He came in as a professional. The downside of that is we're not going to see a progression or this big leap in Luca's game. Because he is already like what, like Jay said, 28, nine, and nine. Where's he going to go from there? Yeah, the reality is, he's actually going to go down. And why he's going to go down is look at the team around him because we always got to remember that the team around him is a bunch of second rounders and undrafted players. That's literally his entire roster. So, what's going to happen hopefully this offseason? Well, he's going to get better players. Mm-hmm. Well, with better players, well, they're going to demand some shots. They're going to need the ball. They're going to have to do things. So I think we've re- he's kind of plateaued. If he could keep the 28, 9, and 9, I think that's actually amazing uh, because he's now going to have to share. Maybe his assists go up and his points go down. I don't know how that's going to balance out. But I just think with better talent, his numbers aren't going to go up. When you com- 
pair that to Jason Tatum, we've seen the progression of Jason Tatum. He came in, right? He built on it. His game got better. His game got better. So, so although I've got Luca being the more talented, the more skilled player and the better player today, I'm going to look at it holistically and say in five years, when we look back, we're going to see that progression of Tatum. And although he might not be a 28, nine and nine guy, he's going to be a 28 and seven and seven guy, but Mm -hmm. who do you want playing defense? And that's going to be, for me, that's it. That's where I go. Okay. Luke is a more talented and more skilled offensive player, but Mm -hmm. he has no interest in playing defense. So if I have this franchise, I'm like, Oh, well, he's putting this up. Tatum's putting up these numbers one with better players around him. So he's the leader of a, a better team. Mm -hmm. And on the defensive end, Hey, you know what? He could play some defense too. So I think in five years, we're going to look back and say, you know, again, Luca more talented, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it to Tatum by a hair in five Mm -hmm. years today. It's Luca, but I think Tatum Tatum has that. Now it's going to take something from Tatum. It's going to take consistency, which he does not have today. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take, there's this, that next level of his mentality. Can Mm -hmm. he, you know, can he really get, I don't want to say angry, but can he just take over, take control? Like if he's having a bad shooting game, can he will himself to then go be a yeah. shutdown defensive player, right? Can he do, can he, will he take the last second? Will he take the big shots, right? Anybody, not anybody can score in this league, but there's a lot of people who could put up 25 shots and score, you know, whatever in this league today. But can you do it efficiently? And can you stop someone on the other end? And I think yeah. that's where Tatum has the edge over over right. Luca. But like again, if you ask me today, yeah, it's it's Luca. Luca's the better playmaker. Yeah. He's the better shooter. Yeah. He's the better like he's the better all of that stuff right now. And when yeah, I think I... about and when I'm sorry, Haley, when I think about what when, when you, what you just said about book not being in this conversation. Well when I think about that, I think about Luca. Is Luca a franchise player? Are we building it around Luca? I'd like to say yeah. I think we're building it yeah. around him. Jason Tatum is another guy. Are we gonna build it around this guy right here? This is a, he's our franchise player. Am I building it around book? I can't say with 100% certainty that I'm building it around book. Now, that doesn't mean that book isn't an important they piece did. to what we're doing. I would love, but, I would love yeah. book on the Mavs. <laughs> yeah, he'd be great for them. He work. would be great he, on the Mavs. He, he would be great. Just a guy that Luca can go Behind to just Luka. for buckets. Yeah. yeah. He would be, he'd be a guy. That's the guy. I, I mentioned this in the past about a guy that Luca needs just to go to for buckets, like a Carmelo Anthony type of guy yeah. where I can just get this guy the ball and he can work, right? And we can just get buckets from him. A guy like Devin Booker would be perfect for that. A guy like Zach Levine, a guy like DeMar DeRozan, just a guy that I can go to like that. But am I building my unit around him? No, I'm not building my unit so around him. So just for, for, the, for those watching and for those that are going to watch this recorded later, Jay was mentioning the Carmelo Anthony type of player for Luca when he was live with Richard Jefferson. No big deal. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I saw there you on with RJ. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm just saying, just put it out there. Just put it out there. But yeah, but it's yeah. That's you know that's and that's how why I say he's not in that conversation because book. If he yeah. was on the maps, he would be the number two to Luca. And you yeah. know what? With Chris Paul going what thirty eight soon. Yes, he just turned thirty seven in in this month. As a matter this fact. month, so okay, he'll yes. be thirty eight next year. So mm-hmm. you know maybe that's maybe that's. Maybe that's not a ridiculous place for him to go. I don't know what I don't. What would Phoenix? Phoenix do historically just, just blows MVP up their teams, eaten? anyways. Like let's be honest, they haven't been really yeah well managed yeah. historically. So you never know. No, I agree. So okay, so for now we're gonna agree that Luca is better. I think Luca today, moment. Tatum in five years. Yeah. But my question. I'm is thinking more two. I'm two? thinking two years. I'm thinking. No, I'm two saying when we look Tatum. back five years from now. Right. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my thinking is that currently Luca is as an individual player, he mm-hmm. he is good on his own. Obviously, not good enough to carry a team to the finals, but he's almost mm-hmm. done that alone. Like, mm-hmm. but Tatum, I feel like he's quite reliant on his fellow teammates, which is good. You should be. But right. do you think if in a year, next season or following season, if he and Jalen Brown were split? and he had to do a lot of that on his own, how do you think he would fare? Does he need that kind of duo to keep going versus a Luca who he can kind of mesh with whoever he has? Well, we're talking, about, we're talking about a guy in Jalen and Jason Tatum who when Jalen Brown is out of the lineup, he's 30 and 8 when he's out of the lineup. 
and that's over yeah. 10 games that he's played. He has not been in the lineup. I'm talking about a guy that's 30 and 8. So I can clearly get my shot off. I can clearly do my thing, not just on the offensive end, but on the defensive end of the floor. In fact, what I'm showing when I'm 30 and 8 is you can build it around me. I'm the guy that you can build it around, and I'm the guy that you can run it through. Now, the reason why this thing is working in Boston is because these guys have now meshed and roles were established. All right, you're gonna be, you're gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then there's gonna there's gonna come a time when you're going to have to step up, and I'll take a step back. Then there's going to come a time when I'm going to step up, and then you're going to take a step back. And I said this before, and I stand on it. We have to establish who we're writing the songs for. Both of us can't be at the microphone at the same time. We can't. Yeah. So okay. one of us has to one of us has to step back from the microphone. So to have a team in today's NBA, to have a mm-hmm. successful team in today's NBA, no one wins it alone. Mm-hmm. No one's going to the finals and winning it alone. So we know that Tatum can, in the regular season, 30 and 8. We, he know we can win when he doesn't have his, his second person. We know that when he does have his second person, he also can play as that teammate, whether it's, mm-hmm. hey, it's your turn to go. Okay, now it's my turn to go because we've seen him do it, him and Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. What we haven't seen from Luka, we've seen him be able to carry a team by himself to a certain point. We haven't – now I'm not saying he can't. We haven't seen him do it by, uh, with someone. Right. So it's going to be yeah. interesting when, when another – listen, everybody in the NBA – this is the thing I always remind people. The likelihood of making the NBA, okay, you are more likely to be struck by lightning twice. Not once. Not once. Two twice. times. So why is that important? <laughs> well, because everybody in the NBA was the best player in their high school, was one of the best players at their university. Was like, right? They were, they're all alphas. Mm-hmm. So what happens when another alpha comes into Dallas? How will that affect Luka? Again, I'm not saying negative. I'm just saying we don't know how he's going to do it. We do know with Tatum that he can do it. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens if and when, hopefully yeah. when, they upgrade that roster. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling something's coming next season. Uh, I mean, they did a great job this season, but we'll see what happens. But um, so, I mean, that's pretty much all I had for today, unless either of you have any closing thoughts or um and you guys in the chat make sure to put kind of what you want to hear next week as well if you have any specific talk topics um for next i, I want to ask a question to garp the fisted just because he's in the chat here um not a super chat garp come on garp uh okay hope you guys said the same for lebron what does that mean what do you mean we said uh, tell me what that means tell me what that means tell me what that means uh how about this so you got boston we both have Boston and the Warriors making it to the finals. I do. You want to save it for Tuesday, our our, our uh, finals preview, or or you want to give a way too early pick? <laughs> well, we've already said it, so it's not like yeah. it's, it's yeah. something that we're we, not jinxing anything. Yeah, we not, we already gave it up, so it's not like it's a situation where <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of hey Haley, I think that the Celtics and the, the <laughs> no, we yeah. already gave it up. So yeah, it's, it's it's if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it, no doubt. Yeah. So, uh, what you- all right. So Tuesday. So Tuesday okay. we'll do our finals. Tuesday, Tuesday we'll do our finals preview. Um, all right. Let's see. Before LeBron joined Miami, how did you view him? That's, I viewed that's- him as a franchise player. I didn't view him any different. When he got on the Miami team, I didn't view him any differently than I did in Cleveland. In fact, I was actually happy when he got to Miami because I saw him with a bunch of guys that he could play off of, that could play off of him, that would make his game even better, and it did. My my issues with LeBron have never been on the court or the decisions he has made. I I've, I've said this multiple times. If he stayed in Cleveland, like never left Cleveland, he would have been lucky to win one chip and that's because Maybe. the front office is useless. So I don't blame him for leaving and going to Miami at all. Now, I didn't mm-hmm. like the whole decision, the whole kind of what they did that whole production yeah. I think was dumb. But I, I always said he's he's a franchise guy. I'm curious to see how he's going to be. I said the same, actually the same thing that I'm saying about Luca. I want to see how he plays with another superstar because he's never really had. Like if you think about it, his best players were early on was what El Gauskis, um, Mo Williams, Mo Williams, <laughs> you know, like Larry you, Hughes. Yeah, Larry, definite guys who were definitely like role players good guys mm-hmm. could score like oh they all had good attributes mm-hmm. but they were always role players when he said he's going to miami with wade and bosh i was like okay well here's the best player in toronto here's the best player on miami 
that teams were built around these two guys, how is it going to work? And let's be honest, it didn't work very well at first. It didn't look good at all. Until it they figured it out, happen. which was year two. Oh, and then it was oh, then it was great. But year one, it it took some there was an adjustment period. So yeah, I've I, and I've what no was issues. and what was that and what was that figuring out, Tone? That figuring out was Who's yo, you alpha? gotta be you. Who's you gotta alpha? be the dude. Yeah. You got it, it, you gotta be the guy. Can't be, oh, I'm sort of the guy. I'm like I just said, who are we writing the songs for? All three of us can't be at the microphone at the same time. Who are we writing the songs for? So if you're gonna sing, we're gonna be back here. But if we're if you're gonna sing, then I'm gonna stand behind you. So it's not gonna just be all of us, or just we gotta figure out who the guy is. And once they figured out that it was James, they were off. Yeah, I think and and listen, that was I it's almost to James's credit and his mm -hmm. detriment. Because he kind of came into my aunt. Because I think if they all went to a different team, it would have happened faster. He would have said, Hey, this is, you know. But he kind of went to Miami. He's like, okay, this is Wade's team. He's my friend. Mm -hmm. He already won a chip here. So this is your team. I'll be the second guy. That's mm -hmm. not – he. I don't think he's he plays well as, at that time in that secondary role, and it right. didn't work. And once Dwayne – I think it was actually Wade who said to him, hey, dude, this is your team. Lead you us. It. Then it, it started to – then it obviously started to work. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, we had a great show today. I loved the – uh, Tatum, Tatum and Luca discussion for mm -hmm. many, That's many right. years. Just leave book right out of it. Leave book right uh, okay. out. Okay, <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry, but I love book. I I'm from there. I you know I've always liked him since he's played there. But um, you know, I yeah, but he's got he the is... Jenner curse, right? Is that a... <laughs> apparently? I, I don't know much about that, but <laughs> but um, yeah, it was good. It was good discussion. Um, but yeah, you guys drop in the chat. Uh. And if you come to any of our platforms, let us know any ideas you want to hear about on Tuesday. But, yeah, we'll definitely dive into uh, the finals predictions and all that has to offer. Yes, down. sir. I'm excited. So until Tuesday, Thursday. Jay. Take it light. We'll take See it. See you guys later. <laughs>